It's honestly kind of crazy how much better Snowbreak Containment Zone has become in just six short months. At launch, Snowbreak was an absolute disaster. The mobile version was so bad it was unplayable. The story was a mess. I liked it. Voice acting was questionable. I liked it. Well, Fenny and Fisher, yeah. anyways. You know, I really miss spending time in the lab. Characters looked like they were made out of plastic, and there was a huge lack of content. The only saving grace the game had was the core gameplay. I will fight anyone who says the shooting mechanics were not good. Running around, swapping characters, and shooting robots in the face was immensely satisfying. However, for as much as I loved the game, as far as much potential as I saw in the game, at the time, I simply could not recommend it. Fast forward to today, however, and it fills me with immense joy to be able to say the following. I, blank page, page for short, strongly recommend Snowbreak Containment Zone. Snowbreak is a third person shooter gacha game available on mobile and PC through the official client or Steam. Thankfully, they fixed mobile and it's actually playable now, but unless you're part spider or some kind of basement dwelling gaming god, mobile controls just don't feel great to play, so please connect a controller to your device. But honestly, PC Master Race is definitely the way to go. And no, there is no console version, maybe one day, but that hasn't been announced, so who knows. Boy, oh boy, where do I begin? Well, let's start with the thing we'll be engaging with the most, the core gameplay. Your team consists of three units, which you can freely swap between during a level. Currently, we have six weapon types, pistol, submachine gun, assault rifle, shotgun, sniper, and the newly added crossbow. Each weapon plays differently and feels great. If you're wondering why the gameplay is so strange, it's not because the gameplay sucks. Trust me, please. <laughs> it's because I'm trying my best to show off the different stuff characters can do. Which leads me into skills. There is a nice amount of variety in what these beautiful women can do. Everyone has an active skill that can be used when you are controlling the character, a support skill that can be used when they are on standby, and an ultimate, which can be used active or on standby. And while two characters might have the same role, they achieve the same goal differently. For example, the four star Yao and Chen Xing are both healers. However, the way they heal you from the brink of death differs. Yao summons a little drone friend that follows you around. Meanwhile, Chen Xing summons a Pez dispenser that farts out healing juice every other second. Damage wise, Life summons multiple flying turrets that hunt down the opposition. Nita uses her big, juicy, glorious arms to eradicate those pitiful imbeciles. Haru uses her sword to slice and dice, and lastly, Kaya skates all over the battlefield, finding the perfect position to set up and blast the enemy away. These are just a handful of examples, but already you can see that while the game at its core is a shooter game, the developers tried their best to give characters a unique identity. The one complaint I have with the gameplay is that for some fucking reason, we have a stamina bar. I truly despise that Breath of the Wild popularized stamina bars. Yeah, yeah, I know they existed long before Zelda, but these bars have spread like a plague ever since Zelda started running out of breath. And lastly, you can take cover. Honestly, this mechanic feels very tacked on. No real reason to use it. It's just kind of here. The developers do plan on updating it in the future, so hopefully it actually becomes something worth using. The game is still young, but it has a nice variety of enemies. You have basic mobs that just shoot at you, elite units with special gimmicks, a guy with a shield and a flamethrower, a guy that summons drones, big daddies, a crab tank thing, and much, much more. No, seriously, they love throwing mini bosses at us. Each update has like four of them. There's also roughly 15 big bad bosses, something like that. Some are definitely better than others, but I wouldn't say any of them are bad necessarily. The core gameplay mechanics, combined with the unique character skills and surprising variety of enemies, makes Snowbreak a really fun, engaging game. Speaking of engaging, something I personally love is Katya. She easily has the best kit so far, and it all centers around her movement. Look at this! She's zipping and dipping all over the place. Her dodge, did I forget to mention you can dodge? Her dodge <laughs> is this quick flash, and her skill makes her slide, then root herself like she's a turret. Combining her dodge and skill movement is an absolute blast. I bring this up because as of me recording this, she is the newest character and if future characters are as well made as her, for example the eventual 5 star muscle mommy, 
then I will cream my pants because my god, dude, she is so much fun. With that out of the way, let's talk about what you will be doing in this game exactly. I'm not going to talk about every game mode, but I do want to talk about a couple of them. First up, we have the main story and it's a mixed bag. <laughs> so the main problem with it is the fact that people don't like to fucking read. People don't know how to read. <laughs> okay, no, seriously. Okay, so the main story is basically a visual novel. Cutscenes consist of two cutouts of characters talking to each other and text boxes that you have to read in order to understand what is happening. Luckily, the cutscenes themselves aren't super long. They range from maybe one to two minutes. So while yeah, you have to read, it's not really that big of a deal because they usually don't last that long. And the stages themselves aren't anything super interesting. Usually it consists of go from point A to point B, defeat enemies, destroy the thing, activate the thing, save the character. So they're not super engaging, but they are short and they are fun to just quickly run through. So yeah, the game launched with 10 chapters and I'd say that the first 10 chapters are definitely a mixed bag. Some chapters are kind of engaging, others are kind of boring, <laughs> to be honest. I would say it gets slowly better as the chapters progress. Chapters 9 and chapters 10 probably being the best of the original 10. However, currently the game has three new permanent chapters. Chapter 11, a special chapter, I don't know why it's called special, don't ask me, and then chapter 12. Chapter 11 probably has the best story so far. It centers around Haru. The stages themselves aren't anything super engaging with, but again, they are fun. The special chapter did have a bit more gimmicky stages where we we're doing like specific things. For example, there was a stage where we were running around as Horu where we had to be stealthy, hiding from enemies. There was another one where we got access to a turret and we were just mowing down these fools. <laughs> there was like two, maybe three gimmicky stages. Most of them were just traditional run from point A to point B. And the story, again, was engaging. It was interesting. I was engaged with what was happening. But again, depending on your tolerance for visual novel storytelling, you might hate it. I think in general, the story is slowly getting better. The, sto the stages are becoming more interesting and the actual visual novel stuff is becoming more interesting just because the story is actually going somewhere. But again, if you don't like to fucking read, you might not have a good time. <laughs> I really do hope at some point the developers will be able to afford voice acting for the main story. The stages themselves do have voice acting, but the visual novel doesn't. Hopefully the game will continue to grow and eventually they'll be able to hire voice actors for this stuff. But who knows? They did cut English support, by the way. <laughs> so you might notice that at the beginning of the game, characters are speaking in English, but then at some point, they randomly start speaking Japanese. The reason for that is that the developers had to cut English voice acting support because they just couldn't afford it anymore. The game wasn't doing super well. They had to make some cuts and they made the, ch the tough decision to cut English support for voice acting, which sucks. The game is still in English, like dialogue boxes and descriptions, all of that stuff. That's still in English. It's just the voice acting isn't anymore. All of the characters from the launch up until version 1.3 do have full English support, but everything added post version 1.4 is no longer has an English voice. It's in Japanese or Chinese or whatever language you select. Disappointing, but like I said, the game is slowly growing. So hopefully they'll be able to bring back the English support at some point. At the very least, I really hope they bring back Fenny and Frisia's voice acting. I just like Fenny's voice actress. I thought she did a good job. And then Frisia is British. For some reason <laughs> and i just kind of liked the voice i thought it was fun all in all i like the main story but i can understand if people don't next up i want to talk about co-op because co-op is really weird the permanent co-op game mode is called gigalink and it's okay it's not bad but it's not super engaging either you and two other people team up and go through a stage where you run from point a to point b defeating enemies and eventually fight a boss at the end and like i said not super fun but it's not bad either However, every update we get a temporary co-op mission called Endless Battle and this is really fun. It's really simple. It's just you and two other people try and survive 10 rounds of enemies constantly running at you, each round getting progressively harder and harder. And it's really fun and your experience can vary. Sometimes you're gonna have a pretty easy time just kind of enjoying defeating enemies with two randoms or your friends depending. 
or you can be absolutely butt fucked by the enemies just being absolutely destroyed by them dying over and over and over again <laughs> like it can be a pretty challenging game mode sometimes like i said co-op is in a really weird position right now where sometimes it's worth doing and other times it's not i really hope the developers figure out something to do with co-op because i want to do it more often because i want to play with other people it can be fun but currently i only do it half of the time i only do it when endless battle is available so yeah, like I said, I hope the developers figure out something to do with co-op. Next up is the Underground, and this is basically just the Abyss from Genshin Impact. Four stages where you just run through them and defeat enemies. Sometimes there's like a specific gimmick to give you a debuff. Ice characters do less damage, or every time you dodge, you have reduced defense or something like that. It's not super difficult, but the rewards are worth it. You get a pretty decent amount of summoning currency, so it is something that you should engage with. You have the boss mode, which is pretty fun. It can actually be challenging sometimes depending on the boss. Some bosses are a lot more aggressive than others, so they can give you a pretty hard time at the higher difficulty. Difficulty 5 can actually be an absolute nightmare depending on the boss, or it can be a pretty easy cakewalk depending. For example, the tank guy, pretty easy, not gonna lie. But then you have somebody like Katya or Vulture who are constantly going after you and can give you a really difficult time. And lastly, I want to talk about the new permanent game mode added called Paradoxal Labyrinth. And this is basically a roguelike. There currently there's four difficulties, easy, normal, hard, and danger, danger, danger. And it's pretty much what you expect. There's multiple floors and each floor does something different. Sometimes you fight an enemy, sometimes you fight a boss, sometimes you go to a room that heals you, sometimes you get an upgrade room, sometimes you get a room where you can buy stuff. And at the end of your run, you fight the super duper big bad boss. And it's fun, you know, not super complex, not super engaging, but it is a fun thing to go through. The developers did confirm that they do plan on updating the Paradoxal Labyrinth as time goes on. So hopefully it becomes even more interesting over time. There is a skill tree, which is nice. It ranges just from your pretty basic stuff. Increase ice damage, increase shotgun damage. You start around with a free healing item. Reduce prices in the shop, that kind of stuff. And this is just something to slowly make your runs easier and easier as time goes on. You also can level up in the Paradoxal Labyrinth, meaning each time you clear a run, you get EXP for the Paradoxal Labyrinth, and you get free stuff. Ranging from free summoning tickets to summoning currency and a free weapon, or money and level materials. The rewards aren't super crazy, but they are good, and this is something that you just slowly level up as time goes on. All in all, the Paradoxal Labyrinth is a good addition, and I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. The last thing I want to talk about gameplay-wise are events. Now, events are pretty traditional for a gacha game. At the beginning of every update, you get access to whatever the event story mode is, whether it be a permanent story chapter or just a temporary event story. Each event also has a bunch of different temporary event game modes that we get access to as the update slowly progresses week after week. And the event game modes can vary from something really interesting and fun like Endless Battle or something really, really boring like the Monopoly game mode we got in version 1.3. <laughs> and we also have the event shop, which is honestly really good. You have summon tickets that you can get. You have a free four star weapon. That's always a good free to play option for whatever the brand new five star character is. And you have a bunch of level up materials. Earlier, I mentioned that a complaint people have for this game was the fact that everybody looked plastically. And I'm glad to say that the developers are actively trying to make characters not look like plastic monsters. <laughs> like, no, legit. Compare Katya to the original launch characters. And you can tell that Katya actively looks a lot better. Now, she's not perfect by any means. She still looks a little strange. But the developers are actively trying to improve the models of characters. Oh, recently, they announced that they're going to go back to one of the launch characters, Akasia Kaguya, and fix one of her skins because her hair looked really weird. They are actively going out of the way to not only improve new characters, but also old characters, which is really, really cool. They don't have to do that, but I like that they are. You know, it proves that they care. So yeah, if you're disappointed because you were having a hard time jacking off to your fictional 3D plastic anime women, don't be anymore because they are slowly becoming less plasticky. So you're going to have an easier time jacking off. <laughs> oh man. Hey man, I don't judge. Do whatever you want to do. Speaking of jacking off to anime women, the dorm system. 
<laughs> so the dorm system is actually kind of fun. It's better than most dorm system from gacha games. Most gacha games basically give you like a room where it's just like small little chibi versions of the characters are running around. And they're usually really, really boring. But Snowbreak, instead of doing that, actually just gave them their normal 3D models. In the dorm system, you can just kind of like look at the characters or talk to them. You can go to their room and just kind of look at them doing whatever it is that they're doing in the room. And you can also give them gifts just to kind of make it feel more alive, make it feel more lived in. And there's even special gifts that you can give them where you and the character hang out and do something. For example, you can sit down with Moxie and sleep, I guess. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Or you can drink wine with Katya, which is pretty cool. The dorm system is a fun little extra thing this game has that definitely helps you get closer to the characters just because you can kind of hang out with them outside of, you know, doing the stages and kind of learn more of them as a character because they do expand upon the characterization too here. So while I usually don't really care about dorm systems, I actually really like the dorm system for this game. And the developers confirmed that they do plan on expanding upon it in the future. So as strange as it is, I'm actually kind of interested in seeing what exactly happens with the dorm system in the future. I think there's a lot of potential here. And that leads me into the final thing I want to say about this game. Snow Break Containment Zone, as you probably have noticed throughout me saying in this video, is not perfect. It still has some pretty glaring flaws. Like I said, co-op isn't even worth doing half of the time. <laughs> and the story mode is a mixed bag, let's be honest. Hell, they cut English support. Snowbreak is not perfect. It is still heavily flawed. But the reason I love Snowbreak so much is because, well, for starters, the core gameplay is really, really fun. The shooting feels really good. The characters themselves are really fun and unique. And even enemies are fairly diverse in what exactly it is that they're doing. Just running around the different stages is super, super fun. But even more so than that, I just love that the developers are actively trying to improve. They do listen to feedback. If you have a complaint, if you have a suggestion, voice your opinion. You have a voice and the developers do listen to you. One of the biggest complaints for this game was the fact that characters look like plastic monsters and the developers are going out of their way to slowly fix that. People were disappointed by Katya's damage when she first came out and the developers almost immediately buffed her. Now, they even changed her alternate fire. I didn't mention this, but Kaya has two versions of her fire. She has one where she rapidly shoots one bow, and then another one where originally she shot, she shot a spread shot. It was like five bows at once, but they changed that, and now it's an explosive arrow. The reason they changed that is because people didn't really like her volley attack that much. So they changed it to something else, and people really like her alternate fire now. People complain about the rewards, and the developers are slowly improving the rewards. The game is flawed, it has problems, but the developers actively go out of their way to listen to us. They want to improve the game. They are here for the long run. As long as this game makes enough money to keep the lights on, they are actively going out of their way to improve it. And I respect that, I love that. I think Snowbreak has a lot of potential to truly become a really, really good, fun game. And unlike certain gacha games out there, the developers are trying their best to reach that potential. So for as long as Snowbreak continues to strive for self-improvement, I will be here championing this game. It's a really fun, flawed game that deserves way more attention. It deserves to be able to reach that potential. Actually, something that I forgot to mention, which I'm not going to go super deep into because I made an entire video about it, is the fan service. A lot of people wanted more fan service in this game and the developers listened. The game went from having characters that looked like this to having characters that looked like this. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to learn more, I will leave a link in the description to that video. Feel free to go watch it. It's honestly kind of interesting. I think Snowbreak Containment Zone is a flawed gem with potential to become an absolutely amazing gotcha game. And because of that, I will continue to support it. I will continue to champion it. And it is a game that I truly do believe is worth your attention. I highly recommend it, flaws and all. So, my dear friends, if you made it this far into the video, Thank you for watching. Do you plan on playing the game? If you already play the game, what are your thoughts on the game? Why do you play it? Today's secret word is going to be muffin, just because I really want a muffin right now. <laughs>
Feel free to use it in a comment if you want, just to let me know you made it this far into the video. Thank you so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. Feel free to leave a like, dislike, subscribe, or don't. It is up to you, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.